Hello and welcome, it's Michael Kölling again. Nice to see you back here. Let us jump right in and continue with our project. Before we add more functionalities today, I have to um, tell you one thing, and that is that in the code of my person class, uh, which I wrote yesterday and I came back to today, I actually noticed that I've got a bug there. Um, happens to the best of us. You will, if you have programmed for a while, you will know that uh, we are making mistakes all the time. The art of programming is actually to recognize your mistakes and fix them. And what I noticed here is that in my act method, I say um, I move, and if I'm infected, then I infect others and then I heal. Um, I have the heal outside of my if statement, and that's not great actually, because when I'm not infected, I shouldn't heal. Um, so I should take this, remove it here, and instead move the heal statement into the is infected, so that I'm only healing when I'm actually affected. Because the effect was, before if we notice, if we have a look at what the heal does, the heal set the infection um, level. It, it um, decremented the infection level, so it subtracted one at every act step. And when I'm not infected, the infection level is zero. And so actually it counted my infection level into uh, the negative. Um, and that is actually not what I want because um, here I'm checking whether the infection is greater than zero to see whether I'm infected. And so when it goes negative, at first it has no effect. And for quite a while you will not see this error. But after a long time running, um, there will be an integer overflow or underflow rather than negative a number will um, roll over into a positive number and suddenly we count as infect infected. So even though the error did not show up yet because our simulation wasn't running enough, that actually was a proper error that ultimately eventually would have gone wrong. So I noticed that um, just now when I looked at my program again. Um, and so if you have copied my code before, uh, you should fix this as well. The first new thing I want to do today, well, first of all, I, I, I looked at my simulation and I thought this is a bit too crowded. So one of the things I thought is we should have a few fewer people. Um, and the number of people is set in the world. And because I've made that a named constant, it's really easy now. Just change the value of a constant. I go here and I change the number from 300 to 200 people. And that somehow looks a bit more reasonable. It's not quite as overcrowded as before. So that was easy. Now the more interesting thing that I want to do is I want to do two things today. First of all, when I wanted to see the infection, I always had to manually infect one of them um, and then to run it to see the infection spreading. Um, I got a bit tired of always do that manually whenever I ran that. So I wanted to have one person automatically infected at the beginning. Um, and the easiest to do that is just when we put the people in here, the population put an infected person in there. Um, and I can do that by just um, putting the first person I put in there in as infected. So I just say person um, person is new person. So here I'm creating a single person um, and storing that person in a local variable instead of putting that new person directly into the world. And so that is that I have access to the person now and I can say person completion uh, infect, then I infect this one person. And just to um, have a bit more predictability, I will put that infected person in the middle of the screen, not at a random position. So I just say add object person, and then I put them in the middle of the screen. And remember here, up there, we are defining the size of the screen. Um, and I just take half of that so that I have the middle of the screen. So that is 500, 300. By the way, if you were listening to the things about having random numbers in your code um, that are not uh, necessarily fixed, and I said before it would be a good idea to make them named constants, you can also do that. And it would be a good style to do that with these numbers as well. So I could make a constant saying um, world width and word world height and use those here. And then here, just use world width 
divided by two. Um, that's a change that you can make on your own. That would be an improvement instead of having these dependent numbers here um, in the code. Because now, of course, if I later change the world and I'm not aware that here this is actually half of this number, I might be tempted to change the, this number without changing this number. And that is not um, a nice thing. It's an, it's an error waiting to happen if I really want that person to be in the middle. So I'll leave that up to you to fix that up and improve that yourself. Replace these numbers with the use of a named constant. But let's first see what it looks like. So now immediately when I go there I have one infected person here and the infection spreads. If I reset that I always have one infected person in the middle. Okay, that's good. That just makes my testing a bit quicker and easier. Um, it removes the need to um, always um, interactively put the infected person in place. I'll end here for today and next what we will do is we will start counting the number of infected people. That comes in the next episode.